Hello and welcome back to the car journey. Today's video is a little different. We're going to do a breakdown of Suica Circuit. It's a 1.7 mile road course just west of Albuquerque, New Mexico. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing we're going to cover is setting up your hot lap, which is going to start all the way back at turn 14. So turn 14 here, we're going to make sure we get the maximum speed out of this corner. So we carry the maximum speed down the straightaway. So just before where this video starts, you're going to want to make sure you're set up as far right against the wall on the entry of 14, get all the way down. And what we're going to want to do here is get down to this third painted box. And that's roughly where we're going to go uh, nearly full power as we accelerate and track all the way out to this wall as we head down the uh, front straightaway. While we're coming down this front straightaway, and seeing the start finish line, we're actually gonna track slightly to the left here, just ever so slightly. And the reason why we're gonna do this is as we get down this track wall, it's gonna open up for the exit to the, uh, to the hot pits. And we're gonna use, take advantage of that extra space to open up the entry into turn one, which means we're gonna set up to the right a little bit more so that the minimum speed we carry through turn one is higher. So here we go. We're aimed just a little bit wide and you see we've now aimed back in so we've now taken a, a track that's a little bit uh, to the right of the track to open up the the left hander that's coming up notice when we break here there's this white line and what we're trying to do here on this white line is straddle it because down just a little bit farther here it's going to turn into a tar line which is actually a break in the asphalt and you do not want to have your right side tires on that you'll have very poor braking performance and might have an off at turn one. So my preference is to go ahead and straddle that strip so that my right side tires are on the right side of it. And that again opens up that entry so we can carry more speed through turn one. If you're uncomfortable angling out here, you just wanna make sure all four of your tires are to the left of it. So here we go through. You can see this now very obvious white, white line tar line combo. And we're, we've, got, we've got our right side tires here tracking uh, parallel to it. And what we're looking for here is the painted apex. It's sometimes been hard to tell this year with the weeds, but we're trying to get our eyes on it by turning our head towards that. It gives us a little bit of sighting speed. And we've already started braking here. Uh, generally speaking, I brake as soon as I feel solid contact with the tires after the bump. So we're going to go ahead and proceed. We're sighting that turning point. You can see here it's now revealed itself. And we're going to start uh, while we're dragging the brake, we're releasing some brake pressure and we're turning in the wheel. We're trying to encourage some trail braking, which means we want the rear of the car to come around just a little bit to help rotation. And so we can carry again more speed through the turn. That's a common theme you're going to hear me say over and over through turn one. Get all the way down to this apex. Got some good rotation there right, right before I got to it. And then this allows us the, uh, to hit this third rumble strip. And also right around here, we're going to go ahead and start adding just a little bit of power. Be careful. It's very easy to get sucked in here, add too much power in this area and end up tracking off. So here we go right here. You're adding throttle. And again, you got to, you want to keep your eyes down here uh, because your eye, your, your, the car goes where your eyes are. So you'll, if you start staring at that exit, you will drive right off the track. So we're going to go ahead and keep our eyes down range. We're going to track all the way out to these rumble strips, but not more because it's hard to see in this video, but right here and right here uh, outside this rumble strip and after this rumble strip ends, there's, there's a bit of a drop off and you can actually damage your car. So be careful with that. We're going to stay to the right here and we're trying to sight this apex and we're going to get all the way down to it. In most cars, this is either going to be flat out still if you're in a low powered car or it's going to be a uh, wide open throttle, uh, excuse me, it's gonna be a lift for most other cars. I don't think there's too many cars that can get there with more power than, than grip, but there may be an occasion where you have such a thing and you're gonna to have to actually brake. So we're gonna go ahead and hit play here again. And notice I'm getting all the way down to the apex right here. And I'm trying again to keep my eyes all the way downstream here. I'm looking for that rumble strip on the right. And that's what I want to track out to. And right when I get about halfway down through this rumble strip is when I start reapplying gas. So right here, 
track all the way out. I'm trying to unwind the wheel because I know I'm going to have to start applying the brakes soon. You can see here in the G meter that I'm actually still accelerating because the ball is to the, the bottom half of it. If it's above this line, that means I'm decelerating and I'm obviously pulling some G's to the left. So we're going to go ahead and let the video play forward. Now we're heavy on the brakes. I turn turn three into a two segment braking. So I'm all the way as far right as I dare. I'm going to bleed off and I need to get down to about 65 miles an hour for this apex uh, at turn three, which is right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the car and I'm going to go ahead and bring it all the way down to the apex while braking. I'm going to release the brakes right around uh, just before the rumble strip. I'm going to get maximum G's and then I'm going to kind of keep trying to get the car to turn more left. And there's two reasons. I'm trying to carry as much speed as I can. You can see the track map up here at the top right. I'm trying to carry as much speed as I can through what we call turn three because turn four is a decreasing radius. So I want to get uh, to this portion as fast as I can. Then I know I'm going to have to bleed off speed down to about 40 miles an hour or less to apex this corner and start our way down our journey to turn five. So here we go. I'm going to let the car track out. While I'm tracking out, I'm braking heavily because remember I was going 60 and now I have to get the car down to something I can carry. I'm going to keep dragging the brakes, but I can't drag too much because if I am decelerating too hard, the car is not going to want to turn left. And this area is not known for its grip. If you try and combine too much braking and turning, what we call multitasking, you're going to end up more to the right here. And then you're going to actually push wide uh, off the exit of turn four. And we don't want to do that. Remember, it's a decreasing radius. So bring it tight you don't hear any any gas until I know I'm committed I'm trying I am trying to hit this apex I don't need to get deep in it because I'm really just carrying carry caring about rotation not cutting distance so I'm just trying to get the car to turn so I don't track out too far to the right because I need to get left to set up for the right hander that is turn five so we track out just a little bit I'm reapplying gas if you if your car is pretty neutral and a rotate you get on the gas maybe a little bit earlier I'm still fighting hard, hard turning uh, left here, all the way as far left as I can. And then I'm going to immediately put hard input to get to, to the apex here for turn six. This is one of the apexes where you really need to try and mow the lawn, so to speak, two right tires all the way on the rumble strip. It's very hard to do. You'll have more laps where you miss it. And this one I'm close, but I'm just a little bit off of it. And, the, and you really want to hit the late part of this apex, right where I just uh, saw that white rumble strip that's under the tire now, because it, it, it sends you farther downstream here rather than what will probably happen is you end up going there and having to slow down. Uh, it reduces speed even more before you can get your right turn done. So, And then I'm trying to reapply the gas as aggressively as I can, but making sure there's not going to be a left, that it's going to be one gas application all the way into this corner and then hard on the brakes. This is about as hard as you're going to brake uh, outside of turn one. And then all we're doing here is sighting for this rumble strip. That's what we're using to uh, initially visualize our corner. And as we can, we want to move our eyes to the exit over here so that we can visualize uh, the exit. Brake hard, downshift. Most cars are going to do this in second gear. Again, I'm cutting distance all the way deep, deep, deep on this apex, almost in the grass. You don't want to quite actually end up in the grass because there is a bump and there are there's a drop off. So you're going to have, uh, despite cutting distance, you're going to have a poor result. So two, all four tires on the track, two on the rumble strip. And it's coming up here where you're going to have a decision point. Right here, you have to decide if you have a low power car or a medium to high power car. Anything that's low power, if you come up here to the track map, we're going to go ahead and track all the way up to the left, uh, the, the exit here to the left, which on the track video itself is all the way here. And the reason why we can do that is we don't have enough power that when we apply here, we can go flat out and carry that speed all the way up this hill and never have to lift even at the crest. If you have a higher power car, and I don't mean a lot of power, just, just enough, maybe 200, 300 wheel horsepower, you're going to start to have problems uh, at the crest. And so what we're trying to do on this exit is not track out to track exit right away, but try and stay uh, about a third of the way off of the left side of the track. And you're going to see that in just a moment here. So tracking out, trying to apply throttle, but a lot of right input, pulling a lot of G's. 
And notice we're straddling, again, this entire track is broken up into three segments of asphalt strips. We're trying to straddle these two. It'd be a little bit better if I was more centered on this one, but uh, turn, turn six there, that U-turn is very hard to be consistent about your exit. So you'll take uh, this car placement here as, as pretty good. This will allow us to turn in and open up the corner here into turn seven. Turn seven is pretty straightforward. The only trick here is when you get to this point, start unwinding the wheel because the very top just before the crest, the camber changes and the car actually becomes free or loose and the rear will come around. So you want to kind of preemptively take some steering so you don't have a nervous moment at the crest. Right there, we've unwinded. I even used an upshift to uh, help with traction. And here, I'm trying to sight a very blind apex. It's going to become obvious. I'm just about to break, and there's no visual references. This is one of the hardest corners to sight. So you're kind of just going to have to find what's harder to tell in this video, but is a lot easier in person, is when you start to see the indicators of uh, turn seven here, or sorry, turn eight. So we're going to go ahead and come up. I'm hard on the brakes here. Got to get down from, in this case, 100 miles an hour. And we're going to hit the crest slash jump at doing about 60. So we're still bleeding hard. You're going to ignore this dotted line. This dotted line is for the uh, oval racers that used to run here. And they would use that to not go down the wrong path. They would stay on the, the correct oval. And as we inch up, now it's becoming obvious. They just repainted this so you can see the apex. We're trying to put our left tires here while still having a lot of left side steering. So you gotta, you gotta have this kind of unsighted turn and still place the car extremely well. And it's very difficult. So this corner treat with a lot of respect. You can easily spin off by uh, taking too much of a jump, landing, having a lot of left steering, which makes the, left, the, the front of the car shoot left. The rear tires touch down and they wanna go straight and it can end up in a spin at you know 60 plus miles an hour, which isn't gonna be a good time. So make sure you uh, build up this turn, take the exact line correctly and just keep adding mile per hour slowly. So here we do a pretty good job. Never really got the full jump because we kept the right side tires pretty planted. The left side tires, because we got the car rotated, didn't have the full jump experience, but the car is a little unsettled and we're trying to put uh, the two tires here in that area right there. We've done a good job here. And this is an interesting corner. I've seen it taken many ways. One popular line is to hug the left and to open up this right-hander. And uh, I've, I've taken this corner many times with data and I can tell you that I've never found that torque in any car I've, I've taken here, be it a Miata, Corvette or other, because there is no grip here on the exit. So no matter how well you carry speed in this corner, it doesn't really translate into exit speed. So all you've done is add distance and you've had to slow early to hug this outside, whereas instead what we're gonna do is basically dive bomb the apex at threshold breaking and then cut the corner uh, as tight as we can on the rumble strips. So here we go. Straighten out the car all the way, slowing down. We're going 49 at this moment, but we gotta get down to 30. We're gonna downshift all the way back down to second, like turn six, and we're gonna cut the corner just like turn six. The only thing that's gonna drive really differently here is on the exit, you need to unwind the wheel earlier than you think because there is a lack of grip on the exit. And if, especially if you have a rear wheel drive car, the car is going to over rotate, which means it's gonna, the rear is gonna come around to the left on you and you know have a, have a moment where you're correcting rather than accelerating. So let's get here. I, I do a pretty good job here, but I think I do it too soon and I start at, uh, sending the car in a trajectory off track. I end up having to utilize a premature upshift to get the car kind of, uh, you know, more weight transferred to the nose to get the car to actually turn downstream. But I lose a little bit of time here. This is the most noticeable mistake in this lap. Right there where I had to handle that. But after I got through that moment, we're now in a good position. We're going to follow the left side of this track. Uh, this turn 10 is going to be a very weird turn in that we're not going to track out on exit at all. We're going to completely sacrifice the exit of turn 10. Two reasons. The exit of turn 10 has never had good grip since the track was laid. And also because the momentum you carry through turn 11 and 12 is far more important. So we're just going to dive bomb the apex and then keep it tight through the exit uh, of turn 10. So here we go. We're accelerating. Hard, pretty hard on the brakes all the way down the apex. Try and get two tires on this rumble strip. Very hard to do consistently. 
Don't let the car track out too far. We don't, we almost kept two tires on the uh, inner asphalt, but we're going to keep fighting right here. And this is going to turn into what we call a Scandinavian flick and rally. So it's where you put a hard input to one direction, immediately followed with a lifter brake and hard transfer to the other side. And so you, every car here is going to really want to rotate here on the entry to 11. So you have to be cognizant that the rear of the car is going to want to step out and be ready for it. So we do want this effect because we want the car to rotate into 11. We just don't want to overdo it and cause a moment. There's There's been some incidents going off between 11 and 12. Usually it doesn't result in anything too damaging other than an ego, but uh, still not fun to put four off. So here we go, all the way there, hard weight transfer. Really want to mow the lawn here. Really want to get all the way down to this apex. From here, all the way to the exit of the next turn, we're never really going to touch the steering wheel except for corrections. We're going to drive this entire two corners with our pedals. So here you're going to be braking, then you're going to then you're going to kind of hit gas at the apex, lift again between the turns, and then back on the gas after the apex of what we call turn 12. So through 11, car is rotating out. We want to track all the way out here to make the entry here to turn 12 less steep. That's why we're all the way along this edge as, as much as we safely can. And then again, just a lift, maybe a drag of the brake, but not heavy braking. All the way down. We want to get as far down here as we can. We can we can take some risk here. Generally speaking, there's nothing uh, too too damaging if you if you cut it a little bit. And we're going to want to track all the way out on the exit to set up for turn 13, which is critical. 13 leads to an uphill section. Here we go through the apex and we're tracking perfectly here on the exit of 12. And this is now again, another turn that is very difficult because it's a little bit blind, leads to an important section, but with a lot of risk on the outside of the turn without much runoff. So this is another corner turn 13 where you have to treat it with respect and build up to it um, each lap rather than just attack it on, on one try. So we're gonna, sorry, we're gonna go ahead and get down here. We're on the brakes some, but not much, and, but get all the way down on this apex. Now the, the joke kind of goes with this corner. If you get it right, you really get it at the limit, you're gonna swear at the apex you've gotten it wrong and you're gonna go flying off the track and not make it. But the reason why it feels this way is the entry is fairly flat but as you come through the middle and the exit of the corner, there's banking that helps capture the car and, and you realize you're gonna be okay. But it's a, it's a very unnerving feeling. Um, that's why you kinda wanna build up to this corner. It, it takes a long while to be comfortable with the kind of momentum you have to carry through here because everything in your body is telling you this is not, not right. You're gonna track all the way out to the exit of 13, set up 14, again, as comfortable as you can to this wall because this will open up the turn into 14. For 14, it's a common mistake here to go into heavy braking and then execute the left-hand turn. We don't want to do that. We want to very much do this like a perfect corner where we take and drag brakes all the way down to the apex and then immediately transition onto the gas. So braking is not going to be super hard. It's going to be medium and then it's going to trail off as we get to the apex and then transition into gas. This is a lower grip corner with a lot of risk. So treat it with respect. Again, build up to it. You get it wrong, you're gonna hit something hard. So here we go. Again, there's the apex. You still can't see it very well in this video, but you can kind of make it out in person. Again, the weeds are a little taller during the making of this uh, video, so it's a little, it's hopefully a little bit better in the future. Now you can really see it. And again, we're looking for that third white rumble strip right here. That's the one we really wanna run over because that'll make sure that we're not uh, early apexing this and really setting a trajectory towards the wall. And we're gonna start transitioning here to gas. We've just about bottomed out minimum speed. And we're back on the gas. And this is just a risk reward. You really wanna flirt with this wall for speed, but you really don't wanna hurt the car. And you really wanna straighten out the wheel and not be having a moment when you come for this bump. You can't really make it out well here, but of course, this is the transition for the oval and there's another dip. Right here, you can make out that dip line you need to really have the car together and the wheel straight when you hit this because you're accelerating, you're going reasonably fast. And so having a moment will send you pretty far down the track. And there's the start finish line and you've completed a lap of Suica circuit. And you're just gonna go ahead and repeat that process from start to finish. 
I'm going to go ahead and reset the video here and we're going to go through it kind of one time in real speed and I'm just going to add some commentary so that uh, you can kind of hear me talking in real time for a lap. Set up this turn at the apex, track out to the wall. We're going to slightly track in, set up this outside, hard on the brakes after the dip, look for the apex, all the way down, cut the grass, look downstream, track out, set up the turn two entry lift all the way down to the apex, hold it for a moment, squeeze on the gas, track out, heavy braking, off the brakes, into the apex, heavy braking again, bleeding off that speed on this late apex, get down, track out, hard left, all the way down to the apex here for turn five, back on the gas as early as you dare, threshold braking here for turn six, cut distance, sight the exit as early as you can and get back on the throttle, and find that crest for turn seven. Remember to unwind the wheel early here at the crest. Accelerate, hard braking, and then quickly off the brakes as you turn in. Watch the jump, straight line braking, cut distance down to second. Unwind the wheel early as you add gas. Set up this turn uh, 10, right-hander, don't exit late or wide. Set up turn 11, steer with your feet all the way hard down into here into turn 12 track out set up this turn 13 all the way down on the apex cut the grass here let it track out as you add gas straighten out the wheel not heavy braking medium braking down to the apex off the brakes back on the gas mind the wall and through the start finish line that's it that's my lap of suica circuit i hope this was helpful for some of you and uh we'll see you in the next one have a good day.